Yes, fantastic. Yeah, very, um, very good question. I think maybe a little bit of place to start might be around, well, obviously, why is it important? I mean, we know that, of course, water is essential for life and it makes mm -hmm. up a large part of our you know, body mass. So about 60% for males and 50, 55% or so mm -hmm. um, for females. And of course, this can vary. Um, and of course, water has, we think about it biologically, it's got lots of essential functions in the body. It can regulate body temperature. Um, and it's also where most reactions metabolically happen in the body as well. So it's obviously staying hydrated is very important for health. Um, and if we get even mildly dehydrated for about, well, if we talk about one, two percent of, of, of body weight, if we lose this, then it can lead to things such as headaches or tiredness. And it can affect our concentration, for example, when we're at work. And um, so that's why, of course, it's really important that we um, try to think about hydration. I think especially sort of throughout the day, really. And we can, of course, get fluids, not just from what we drink, mm -hmm. but also what we eat as well. So it's estimated about about 20 percent or so of the, of the hydration or the fluids that we get is actually from our food. And of course, our needs Again, they can vary depending on um, not just uh, uh, gender, but also age, uh, body size, and also how active we are yeah. and uh, where we live in our local climate. I mean, at the moment, for example, it's a bit of a cold, rainy day here in the UK, <laughs> in London. So um, not really a day where you're probably going to need to be drinking a lot of extra um, water to, because you, you know, if you want to be sweating too much and mm. it's not exactly a hot climate <laughs> at the moment. Yeah. Um, if we think about what the the advice does vary in terms of what we should what we should uh, do and how much we should have so for example um in europe the, there is advice that's a bit different but if we focus in on what we have for advice in the uk it's that we should aim for about six to eight glasses mm -hmm. a day of fluids and that's about about 1.2 liters or so and of course we might need more as i mentioned uh once summer does arrive and once we get into hotter weather or of course obviously if we've been for a run or to the gym if we're being more active and if we think about like within that what counts so you know where should we get that hydration yeah. uh, and the fluid intake from then I think you know we should really start with water as the best choice um, because it provides that hydration but also without any additional calories um, and of course, if we also carry like, a, for example, a reusable water bottle with us, then it can be uh, that we fill up from the tap or water filter can be quite an environmentally sustainable uh, choice, too. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, there are there are others we can we can uh, look at as well. So you, of course, mentioned tea and coffee uh, just now. And yeah, tea and coffee, whilst it does contain caffeine, if we drink it in more moderate amounts, then it can definitely count towards our fluid intakes. And if we are drinking it with either, well, a milk or a fortified dairy alternative, then it can give us a small contribution in terms of some mm -hmm. essential nutrients mm -hmm. also as well, uh, calcium, B vitamins, uh, mm -hmm. iodine. Um, and if we think about some of the other things we could, we could be drinking as well, I mean, fruit and vegetable juices and smoothies, yes, it's true that they do contain some vitamins and some minerals and could also maybe have uh, some fiber in there but they can also be acidic as well yeah. and they also contain what's called uh, free sugars so those that are um, not uh, not really naturally occurring or that well, they're either added to or in this case if you think about juices and smoothies those that when they're when they're blended or juiced mm -hmm. then it can break up and it can expose the gut more to some of these um, free sugars that are naturally present in the, the cell wall, for example, of the, of the plant. And, that, and this can mean that it, it can be not a good idea in terms of dental health yeah. with, uh, with sugars and, and, uh, and the acidity. So it's recommended to not really have more than about a glass, a small glass per day for that reason. Yeah, I think they say about less than 150 mils, don't they? Because there is actually yeah. quite a lot. If you put people to have maybe like a, a fresh juice, like a fresh orange or something, you know, there's actually an, an awful lot of sugar. It's Although it's natural, as you say, it, it's still, you know, sweet. It's still sugar. It's still something to maybe cut down on. So maybe if people find water a bit difficult to digest or to, you know, attractive to drink, either adding a small amount of, of fruit juice to it or maybe a piece of fruit, maybe some berries, maybe some lemon, lime or, or something like that to, to flavour it as, as an option. But I think, um, you know, from other podcast episodes that we've had as well and talking about caffeine, 
this myth that if you drink tea or coffee do does it dehydrate you do you excrete more and I think actually we realize now that possibly that's not the case it's it may perhaps irritate the bladder so that you you pass water uh, or fluid um, urine sooner uh, than if it was just water but I don't think that it actually dehydrates do you agree do you think the same yeah I mean I, I th well you know caffeine can, it can have this mild diuretic effects as you just mentioned yes it can mean we can can lose more lose more water and we don't we don't reabsorb it as as efficiently but i think if we're talking about more moderate amounts of of you know of tea and coffee then it's probably not so much of an issue um, compared yeah. to the fluids that we do get um from tea and coffee i think it's worth mentioning in maybe older adults for example that again as you said might not want to drink water or, or fruit juices um that might drink tea and coffee more regularly as a source of hydration it it can be very very important yeah to to make sure they do get enough because it does tend to be the, the sort of older uh, population who are perhaps a little bit more dehydrated than they should be so okay yeah yeah, yeah. i mean and it can be an issue yeah because i mean you've got some groups of course where we need it can be more important because they might not i might not realize or be able to communicate or be able to um monitor their own sort of hydration levels as much so of course you've got the one end you've got infants and young children mm -hmm. you know who might not realize the cues for for thirst or you know might not even if they're young enough be able to to ask for a, a drink of water for example yeah. but then of course at the other end we have you know um older adults so maybe who are living uh living in care for example who again might not be um might, be, might not be sort of you know conscious of of getting hydration regularly throughout the day yeah 